Uh, welcome to our Tech Week, our first day of our Tech Week. Um, today we'll be having the talk from Ronaldo Arrudas, who's telling us about, a little about Let There Be Light. Um, today is going to work uh, just as for people that join our Agile Week. Uh, it's going to be a sharp end at 1.30 uh, p.m. Brazil time. So at 1.30 we'll uh, end our call and then if there's any pending discussions, we're going to uh, continue that on AC Hub. Uh, be uh, aware of the chat on the right side corner of your screen um, because I'll be sending the links to uh, where we can continue the discussion and also the presence list. And you can also uh, scan your presence list that's on the screen. Um, so, uh, Ronaldo, if you are ready, you can start sharing your screen and start your presentation. Thank you for uh, providing this presentation to us today. Sure. Thank you, folks. Uh, let us start sharing it. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Great. Just figure stuff here. Okay. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then it was lit for you. So how about we think a bit about how words can create experience. Hello there, my name is Ronaldo Arrudas. I'd like to think of myself as self-taught, curious, obsessed with significance, and passionate about some subjects, such as design, business, technology, human behavior, and others. Uh, I'm what Kat Beck would call a pet drip professional. I know a bit about a few things and a bit more about the few or other. My wife sums it in one single world, annoying. Currently, I serve as a director of architecture here at Ethno Code. Uh, today, I want to invite you to an exercise in imagination. Imagine that for the next few minutes, this would be one of those commuting time conversation that from time to time we tend to overhear by the example since we are still in the middle of a pandemic and no uh, let's just disregard this detail for now okay for the next few stops let's reflect on the madness of these maniac rants since in this exercise we will only hear him. Yeah, the subtle him just to hold the questions, right? Following what Pedro just told us here. Okay, the journey begins and we hear a single word communication. And our mind begins to wonder. Communication is not what we say. That's it. We're hooked back to reality. When we turn it to the etymology of the word, communication derives from the verb share. Mm. So in a more holistic way, I would say communication should have more to do with what people understand. After all, share, right? There's a significant difference between the concepts of communication and information even though these two words are often used as synonyms. Starting with the direction of transmission flow, with information is one way, while in communication, it flows in both directions. Because it's a two-way street to be successful, communication depends on how well each listening peer interprets each message and then gives feedback while inform, uh, information to be successful does not depend at all on any interpretation by the receiver. In both cases, there is a considerable loss in the content of each message. 
since each transmission consists of reducing ideas to a previously agreed format, what we call language. This is further aggravated by the need for reception and interpretation in the case of communication, where the reverse process is carried out without having all the pieces to recompose the original ideas. Hmm, interesting. So, by following this comparison, information ends up being something quite impersonal innately. After all, the sender of a message can totally ignore the receiver if we evaluate it coldly. Hmm, at this point, precisely the lack of context originated in communication demands that there is already a relationship established in advance kind of an artifice to stench the losses of a little a little with the each translation step each translation layer we keep adding upon and upon the message although both are just different approaches there's no better worse essentially in my humble opinion I understand communication as something much more empathetic, which culminates in a much higher quality of idea, ideas being transmitted. However, I cannot ignore the versatility of information in reaching a much broader audience and potential. Albeit a more rudimentary way, when exercised, exercised without a certain empathy for the person who will receive it. Like, it's easy to promote this, to inform. And it, it rests upon the, sh the shoulders of the transmitter, the people the firing these, these information, the responsibility to take in consideration, to use, sit up on the shoes of the possible listeners and start wondering, Will they get this with all the missing parts and stuff? Mm, okay. After reflecting on this, a question occurred to me. What if this is precisely the main characteristic of the era we live in today? After all, we don't live in the communication age, right? Hmm. Okay. I once read a quote about Liz Gansky, a well-known thinker in the field of digital entrepreneurship, in short. For those who have never heard of her name, she was one of the people behind the first commercial web application and the first website to offer clickable ads back in 1993. So, hmm. Up to some level, everyone attending today here that works with the internet and works with digital marketing and other, all of this stuff might understand that we somehow work over the legacy of her. Hmm, curious. This is the quote. When you create something, you can fall in love with it and aren't able to see or hear anything contrary. Whatever comes out of your mouth is all you're inhaling. But when you ask a question, will I? You're creating an opening. You're inviting a conversation, whether it's a self-conversation or a conversation with others. To me, this is a good illustration of this thought we are working on. Hmm. Interesting. Too many daydreams. Well, there goes the second station. Right. And what makes ideas move? What compels us to share these ideas out of our heads? What motivates us? 
What is motivation? Dictionary time. Mm, didn't help too much. Let's see motive. Motive. Uh, no, yes. Something more enlightening. Motivation is the process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal-oriented behaviors. It's what causes us to act, whether it's getting a glass of water to reduce thirst, or reading a book to gain knowledge. It's something that involves the biological, emotional, social, and cognitive forces. Oh, damn thing, it doesn't work that activates the behavior in the end of the day. That's what really moves us. Going further, according, according to Daniel Pink, longtime expert on this subject, there are two basic types of motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic. In short, extrinsic motivation is the one most traditionally used as far as we can remember. <laughs> Who has never been encouraged to do something to get a reward, such as bonus in cash, uh, the spotlight, some prestige, a good grade in school, whatever. Or else to avoid the punishment, such as being scolded or getting fired. <laughs> On the other hand, intrinsic motivation is the one that comes from our core. It comes from the heart. The one that makes us wake up early on Saturdays just to watch cartoons on TV. Too old, no, not good example. That one. Or that kept us awake uh, into the night, reading, gaming, Watching that series, you know. Uh, I think this example is good to the young ones. Right. Or preparing you know, some fancy presentations. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. In fact, what varies between these two types of, uh, is just the origin of motivation, which can be caused by something or someone outside or just by pure inspiration. I really need to work better on my researches. Sorry, folks. And just as you have forementioned the author, is worth quoting an excerpt from his book, Drive, the surprising truth about what motivates us. Uh, he should be paying me to do this advertising, but whatever. This excerpt, kind of explains this concept in a much better way, in a much summarized way. So let me share with you. The problem with making an extrinsic reward the only destination that matters is that some people will choose the quick, quickest route there, even if it means taking the low road. Indeed, most of the scandals and misbehavior that have seemed endemic to modern life involve shortcuts. Human beings have an innate inner drive to be autonomous, self-determined, and connected to one another. And when that drive is liberated, people achieve more and live richer lives. So, Apparently, the good life is one where we find what ignites our intrinsic motivation. Something that can engage us in achieving some goal that can provide us with a sense of fulfillment, or purpose. Uh, since the ancient history, this has been one of the fundamental questions of philosophy, especially the Greek. What lives require to be the good life? Well, Aristotle, as well as other of these contemporaries, 
believed that there is a greater order to everything, what they call cosmos. With this understanding, according to him, in order to achieve eudaimonia, which for us now will be just translated as fulfillment, it's necessary to understand what, our, what is our role in the great universal machinery. Once that happens, we could then enjoy the good life as a direct result of being in harmony with the whole, a sense of belonging to something greater, something that would give meaning to our journey. Well, what about when a bit later science starts putting in check the concept of everything is ordered and that everything has its right place in the cosmos? Mm, and when people come around saying that, in addition to being disordered, world is also volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and to worsen it, that is also needs to have a meaningful, a meaning for everything that must be applicable anywhere, anytime. And that, even by being brill, anxious, non-linear, and incomprehensible. And they still want us to read to Daimonia, right? <laughs> well, okay, that flies. Just a blink of an eye, and our station is closed. Uh, before we say goodbye, I want to ask some questions that border on the rhetoric, but which I hope, I hope, will continue to echo in our minds for a little while longer. Here goes the first one. If we want to be heard and understood, but we are not ready to practice empathy, we are doing it wrong will not work, will not, uh, will not uh, be functional. If we want to receive, to take, we must, uh, we need to start giving. There are lots of people, well, well, more wisdom than, uh, wiser than me, that brought these in a, in a short, like, uh, give it, and then ask for take it. So, another one. If we are looking for engagement, regardless of being uh, with ourselves or with other people, you know, but we are not willing to empower people to exert autonomy. And believe me, that means ourselves, if this, this dynamic is working internally in a subjective way. Yeah, we are doing it wrong. There's no way to provide to foster the engagement or to, to make stuff happen, regardless of being a big project or being a work school or even by cleaning stuff make make the the uh, housekeeping job the good word to apply here if we are not engaged with that and to be engaged we must have autonomy we must be self-driven we must be guiding ourselves towards what we want what we believe okay one more statement if we are looking for quality, but we are not sponsoring ways for people to achieve mastery, guess what? People tend to tend to engage and tend to take part very, very uh, more deeper with matters 
where they can just practice the mastery. A good example for this is why the why do people just start uh, starting learning how to play the guitar or drums or any other instrument? Or why do people start uh, working with woodcraft or other kind of stuff? Why? If they are not being paid, if they are not being required to, kind of what we call hobbies, right? Why people do engage with hobbies? Because in short, there, that's where people can just practice and just get better and just kind of gather the satisfaction of just being better than themselves in the day earlier. So I'm not, I'm not looking to look inside words. I'm looking to myself and to my best self and raising these kind of healthy competition like Am I doing better today than I did yesterday? If so, yes. That's a question. And making a link with the previous two, uh, two issues, this is a shorter path to activate engagement and to allow people, to empower people to execute autonomy. Another one. If we are looking for accomplishment, but not offering people a transcending purpose, yeah, you got it. It's kind of being repetitive, but is by being by making some repetition that we start triggering, kickstarting our brain cells to make their work, right? So did this imaginative exercise make sense to you? That's my first question. I'd love you to join me on making this talk a mere piece of information, and I know, ironic, huh? Into a nice sample of communication under the form of a dialogue. How about it? Will you join me? So, this is what I had prepared for today. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope these minutes have been as enriching, uplifting, delightful for everyone here as they were for me. Here's my contact data. You may reach me through this email address or through the AC Hub link for those inside the new code or directly through LinkedIn if you feel better. The QR code being displayed here We'll make the trick. We'll make the last mile. And I really wish you all a great week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronaldo, for the presentation. And I uh, would like to invite you guys to, uh, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand now and uh, ask questions, or you can follow up the discussion on. Uh, AC Hub. Uh, I can actually start with my first question, Ronaldo, for you. Um, you said that a lot of the motivation comes from autonomy, and I wanted to ask you, uh, what's the advice you would give to project leaders to uh, make sure their team have uh, a lot of autonomy on their projects? I think the, mo the most useful one is Turn off the mute button. It's the, the best one I can give now. But uh, there are quite a few, few recommendations or pieces of advice we can give to leaders on making their people autonomy, uh, giving autonomy to their people, their teams. But the simpler one, the simplest, in my opinion, is just this. Step aside, don't be in the middle. Let people do what people know to do. Or even better, let people learn, let people experiment. We then uh, making kind of a, a quotation from the quotation. Well, 
quote section <laughs> from the from the what Lisa Lisa told us. Whenever we create something, we just fall in love with that, and we just start thinking that that's the truth, that's good, that's the way. This is the way. No, believe it. That's your way, based in your experience and your legacy and your learning. When we want to empower people, more than just tell them how to do, how about saying people, why do that? Or what needs to be done? And just take, some, take a, a safer distance and watch. Uh, just just then to interfere when you see people are in risk of going out of control. That's my best advice I can give now. Oh, sorry. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ronaldo. That's a very good advice. I think Guilherme Ramos has a question too. Hello, hello. Hi, Ronaldo. Hello. It's been a long time. I, I don't have any questions. Just want to congratulate you uh, for this very good presentation. And everything that you said makes a lot of sense, especially now when we are all working from home and we need more pro efficient um, project manager, project managers and people with more you know, capacity to take their own decisions, more uh, efficient teams when managing themselves. And I guess we are seeing a lot of uh, speeches like out there about all the technicality, about how Kafka works, streams and databases and all that, but nobody's actually talking about the human side. So I guess you, you, you were very on spot on that, very enlightening. I guess we should have, you know, this kind of a speech every Monday because it makes a lot of difference. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm blushing. <laughs> but what, what I'd say, uh, we need to, to focus in the part out of the how. We need to focus on why. It's very usual, very usually we find people saying, hey, let's be agile, let's move forward. And here's how, here is how you make your team, your team autonomous. Just follow these steps. No, you are telling them how. That's not agile. That's not even respectful if we consider the autonomy perspective. So uh, I, I can figure, I can wonder, there's something around the, this big, huge world. There might be at least one team that thinks that these agile culture, just to pick one sample, does just doesn't apply to them. They want to work in the tra traditional fashion. The question is, are they wrong? So we have another raised hand, Sabrina. Please awesome. come forward. Um, I'd like to say that I totally agree with Guilherme's words and uh, to say that all that you said here in this presentation is being um practiced in your day by day as i see in the meetings we have together the opportunities we i have the opportunity to be with you and to ask for help i felt that you are really worried about being empathetic with people about uh spreading the ideas in a way that is the right way to communicate and also not being accelerated to how you communicate it. Um, so congratulations, congratulations for the presentation and here publicly. Uh, thank you for uh, all your help and all knowledge shared. Oh, thank you so much. This is kind of a huge feedback. Thanks, Pedro, for being recording this because I'll need to watch it again. I feel 
times, you know. That's you can use way. this for your annual review, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Have no doubt I will. I will. I surely will. But more than that, this kind of this kind of feedback, it's something that enhances our communication. See? It the point is I'd uh, like to uh, add just one more little piece of advice, Pedro, in addition to that one that I gave. It, it's not enough to just look like. It doesn't matter our appearances or our clothing or way we introduce ourselves. What matters is what we really are, by inside, in the heart. If we are, uh, uh, we, we are open to be authentic, to be original, we would be, we would just look like what we are. And this is kind of an easy win, right? The, the, problem, the problem lays where we, or when, we start trying to be what we are not. And this is something I put in, in practice to myself, just to kind of mute that tiny little voice saying, hey, you cannot do that. Hey, come on. Because I believe uh, at least most of us here are used to hear this, that voice. Thank you so much for the presentation and for all this discussion, Ronaldo. Uh, congratulations. I think it was really good. And uh, since it was really good and everything that's good deserves a continuation, so please uh, let's continue our discussion in uh, AC Hub. I'm going to stop the recording now. And uh, thank you very much for the talk, Ronaldo, and thank you very much for your presence, everybody. And see you guys on our discussions on AC Hub.